Welcome back to the channel and another beautiful day on the Saran in LA. Finally, we got some decent weather. It's not 9,000 degrees. I just got a notification that there is a rubbish fire going on right up the street up here. I don't see anything personally. Apparently, it's right up here on Temple and Hoover Street. I don't actually believe that there's something up here, but we're about to check and find out. It is possible though, because there's a uh, pretty large homeless community over on this part of town. I would not doubt it. We're out here just chilling for a bit. We are going to do some uh, exploring out on this side. But first and foremost, we're going to see if there's actually anything going on up here. Temple and Hoover is pretty much right here, so... There is something we would expect to see it right about now. Go ahead and pop on the curb. Nothing that way. Yeah, I don't see anything. There's always brush fires over here on this big bank that you see with the um, the dried up grass. I think there's one like every other month. There's a brush fire that starts right here. But if I was going to guess, that's where it would be. I don't see anything at all. I don't hear a fire truck or nothing of the sort. So I'm going to go ahead and say that that was a false report. Anything down here? Nope. Yeah, I don't think anything actually happened. Oh, nope, never mind. Something did happen. Looks like it was probably a small quick fire in these encampments. These are actually relatively new, these encampments right here. I haven't never noticed them until like uh, the other day when I was coming driving through here. Just a lot going on right here. There it is. Yeah. It did catch a fire. A small fire. Luckily it got put out quick. Yeah, this uh damn they had a nice SE right there. Did you guys catch that? This encampment right here is relatively new, but it's just a um it's a sign of the times in LA, honestly. I mean I I'm at this point when I see homeless camps and stuff, as someone who's lived in LA my entire life. I'm just, I'm not really sure what to say about it, you know? It's clear where I stand about homelessness. I really, I wish there was uh, more that could be done. And one of my favorite arguments is like, oh, why don't you just take a homeless person into your backyard, blah, blah, blah. Like that is just hilariously incompetent. Whoever like tries to deliver that as an argument against homelessness in LA, it's just, it is out of hand. It's, I don't think I need to expand upon it more than that. It is, it is out of this world how bad the homeless problem is in LA. Um, and underpasses like that really exemplify it in my opinion. It's just um, those pop up and get taken away every week. Every week there's a new underpass where a community springs up and then within the next week, maybe not that exact one, but another one just like it is swept away. I don't know where they go, what they do with those people's belongings, I have no idea. I'm not like a homeless advocate on either side. I just spectate. You guys know what I do. I ride around and I just point out what I see. And what I can say is that something I have been seeing a lot of lately is full-blown sweeps of the homelessness. They're like homeless camps. Like they just completely take everything and there's almost like there's no trace that there is ever a uh, homeless population, specifically on the underpasses too. I feel like it's something that uh, I, 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 I've particularly been noticing it on the underpasses. They straight up take everything. And then it's, I feel like somewhere else in the city is where it pops up. Maybe they're just straight up relocating them. I don't know, I couldn't say for sure. But what I can say is that the amount of camps doesn't seem to have been reduced at all. <laughs> in fact, I, it's probably even more. You know, from this time last year, and ever since COVID, it's just been like, I feel like exponentially increasing the amount of these uh, underpass camps you see out here in LA. What's the solution, ultimately? I have absolutely no clue. Not my specialty. You guys know, I just ride around LA and point out stuff I see. So uh, that's what I'm gonna keep doing, but. Anyways, I don't know. That was actually something on my mind driving down here, because I saw a couple different new uh homeless camps like the one we just rode past and we're about to ride past again going the other way 
because this was way off of the path of where we wanted to ride today. Uh, so I figured I'd point it out. What are your guys' thoughts on that? What do you think a solution is for the underpass camps in LA? They're honestly um, so ubiquitous. Like people from all over the place know LA for its underpass homeless society. It's it's just, I don't know what exactly why they choose underpasses. Maybe someone else can fill me in on the comments on that as well. But as you can see, uh, they have an entire town here. It's, it's They have houses. It's a full-blown community, so that's uh, that's kind of what you expect down here. We got the BMXer coming in hot. There used to be a bunch of homeless. Prime example, down that street, all gone, all completely gone. Uh, we're actually going to cross right here. Oh, there's a stair set right here that we are going to ride down. Ooh. Nice. Smell a little bit of like um, bug spray. It smells like an exterminator just passed through on that stair set. Maybe that's the, the fire. I don't know. Um, anyways, that's a that's a little bit of a start to our quick ride that we're gonna have out here in I don't know what you would call this Silver Lake, Koreatown. It's like kind of a funky little part of town we're at. Um, but it's cool. I do like coming here. My goal was to come right out here today because it's a little bit of a change of pace from the uh, you know. The same old that we've been riding through the last couple weeks. The hood, downtown, stuff like that. There's more to LA than I tend to show you guys, you know, on my videos. It's just I have a certain place and areas that I enjoy riding at. I don't think that's a secret at all. I like riding in places where I don't get bothered and that the police don't care to see me riding it. Which is actually most of LA, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. The police don't really care about what you're doing anywhere. But it's especially like that and uh, in certain areas of LA where, you know, they got bigger fish to fry, so to speak. So anyways, there was that. That's uh, something we'll, <laughs> that, that we saw, I guess. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I thought we'd see some actual blaze, but one thing you gotta remember, the firefighters out here are so good and efficient and they're quick. They will pretty much nine times out of ten beat us to whatever we see or get alerted to on the phone on the app and only in cases where we see it in person before we even get the alert is where we can see like actual stuff going down as far as emergency response in la the ones to fires i mean i feel like are exceptional even i had my own viral short uh where everybody thinks i started a fire for content which is not true it's not the case I don't I can't believe I have to say that but I am not risking a felony for view for a fucking video I'm sorry I'm just not but uh you know people think that I uh you know started a fire and in any case I saw that fire called it in and within two minutes there's fire trucks there that is pretty much the best response time you're gonna get for just about anything in LA uh as far as quote unquote emergencies go I guess it's debatable as to whether or not that was actually an emergency I also got to say, when you're in the situation of something like that, where you see a fire happening, you're not thinking of like, oh, oh it's not that big of a fire. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, that was a tiny fire. You could have put that out yourself. First off, what capabilities do I have to put out a fire on my own? <laughs> like, I don't have a freaking fire extinguisher in my backpack or let alone even a gallon of water. You're going to need at least that much to put that fire out, right? And I don't have that. So... I thought it was funny that a lot of people were like, dude, you should have put that out yourself. Why'd you bother calling the fire department and wasting the resources? Like, hello? <laughs> Are you guys serious? Like, I would obviously have to have, like, I, <laughs> I don't know. In my head, I'm just like, this fire is going to go out of control. If I don't do anything, nobody's going to say anything, and it's going to start burning stuff down. I mean, if I cared about content that much, I would have just let it burn, right? I would have just sat there and watched you guys put it that way so oh what the heck was that yeah so if you put it that way i mean i could have just sit there and let it burn i don't know it tripped me out that first off how much attention that little short got i had people messaging me that absolutely do not watch my channel or my videos had no idea who i was but they were so mad they were so mad that I called the fire department for that tiny little fire. And I was like, dude, are you guys serious? Like, 
there's no way that this is this is real criticism you guys are giving me like you're upset that i called the fire department for a fire that i stumbled into right i mean what do you guys think that sounds crazy right let me know in the comments what your opinions are on that but for me i was like there's no way that uh anyways people were messaging me on instagram people were sending me tweets saying you know i'm a bad person for calling that in i should have put it out myself i i ooh, ooh, that's a nice bug i think sick i just i had to bring that up because i thought it was it was outrageous but you know when i'm riding around you know i just like stuff happens you know when we're in la things happen quickly you just run into weird stuff all the time uh there's my rant about fires i just <laughs> i heard that running into that little scenario it kind of it got my mind going about what had happened earlier so i felt like i needed to bring that up anyways we're gonna post up on this corner right here and figure out what our next move is also look at the graffiti up there how sketchy is it that someone got up there to tag like look at this i mean the only way that i see they could have got up there is going up here up this hill and then they had to shimmy along first they had to get around that thing right there which you know if you fell off from there you're already having a real bad time shimmy around that and they have to shimmy around a light pole there was absolutely zero gap i don't know if you could tell on the gopro the ledge and the light pole so they had to abs they had to either get up on top of it and go around after they get around that they are shimmying all on the i'd say that platform is probably like a foot and a half wide and that is a uh well it says right there 15 feet five inches is that it i feel like that's more than that i guess when you're standing up there it's like an 18 foot drop i guess where your head's at is 20 feet anyways you're gonna have a bad time if you fall down and people get up there to go spray paint and it's not even art it's just random stuff anyways you know you take the bad with the good right we got a miata right here you know i love these side note did anyone see that viral clip of the miata that uh spun out and hit the audi and then kept going and then apparently they got caught down the street everyone was clowning the miata saying it's slow and i was like yeah well they are slow but that's not really the point i guess if you're trying to get into a, a high-speed chase with a miata then uh you already kind of missed the point of driving one right <laughs> it's not i guess they're not really designed for that purpose in any way shape or form Anyways, we're just kind of we're just freestyling along today we're out here in a uh we're not far from westlake you know the place where i'm always falling back to when i run out of ideas i go to westlake we're really down the street from there i just decided i would come check out this part of town today because uh you know i just haven't really been over here at all ever <laughs> you know forever not just recently but I kind of never really ride out here, not for any particular reason as to why or why not, but it's just uh, a little bit out of my uh, territories or where I usually ride. We're zooming. <laughs> We're deep in Silver Lake now. Somehow bombing a hill currently, you know, stay tuned. I guess, <laughs> just stay tuned, I don't know. <laughs> Somehow we ended up here bombing this hill going into Silver Lake. Uh, if we go left we go to echo park if we go right we can smash some alley so let's go right if we can get through yeah we can get through okay so far a different route <laughs> you can say that always bunch of hombres in the car just chilling okay well here we are in silver lake that's TR Studios. Oh, they got some production going over there. That's cool. We're trying to get on the other side of the freeway currently. That is our, is our mission for now. This is what I wanted to come back to. I saw this hill climb in a, a video I did previously, and I was like, I could probably hill climb that. Uh, no, I don't think I could. Dude, what is going on here? Look, they got cats. I got a cat on a bench. A rip and dip. Oh, okay. I've heard of that before. I don't even know what it is, but that's a cool cat chilling anywho what's going on here someone got oh it was a car accident uh-oh that's a bad time unfortunate i got body parts just i mean <laughs> not body parts i mean car body parts of the car just hanging off the edge there used to be a bunch of tents right here those have been cleaned up for a while i guess i said no more here Man, you see, yeah, that, that, that person's having a bad day. Oh, yeah, I would be too. What do you guys think? 
cell phone. Anytime I see a car accident just at all in LA now, I just think cell phone. That's my immediate first thought, someone on their phone. For anyone who's not from LA, who has never been here, uh, one thing I notice when I drive down to the city, you guys remember when I drive down here, it's an hour drive. And I'm sitting there bored, usually I'm listening to a podcast or something, so I'm looking around usually like other drivers, right? The main thing I notice is people on their phones, constantly. <laughs> Anytime I look at someone else driving, they're on their phone, pretty much constantly. Constantly, constantly. Undercover here, what's going on here? Interesting. Undercover filling up at a gas station. Proof of Disease Street Parts. Love that. So I, anytime I see an accident, whether it's bad or, I mean, not that bad, all accidents are bad, but I mean like the severity of bad that it is, I pretty much assume that it's uh, at least one of the parties was on their phone. I hear an alarm going off. And I reckon that most of the time I'm right on that intuition. You know, I feel like if you're driving in LA, you can pretty much just avoid all problems if you just don't use your phone while you're driving, you know? That one simple thing will uh, do a skate park down there. I'd love to check out, but it is packed. So we're gonna keep going. Yeah, just don't be on your phone while driving. You know, it's much harder to, to do than I guess just to say, but it's, it's really simple as that. Just get off your phone. You, you, I mean, I really can't make it up. Almost every single person I look at when I check out other drivers, at least one out of five is on their phone. That's even being generous. I would want to say it's more than that. More than one out of five people are on their phone while driving in LA. You know, it is what it is. I, what are you going to do about it, I guess, right? Anyways, we got one of my favorite curb sections in all of LA. Got a guy walking. Love that little rhythm section right into this, which is one of the craziest sidewalks in LA. It's actually tamed up a little bit. This used to be a lot thicker. It looks like they kicked about half of the people staying here out. They sweep, okay, so prime example of what I was talking about, sweeps. They sweep that street, I want to say, pfft, once a month. Once a month, they completely sweep that sidewalk out. They kick everybody out who's staying there, and they all come right back, like, like clockwork. They come straight back there. Um, you know, as to why they picked that particular spot and try, instead of trying to relocate so they don't get swept out again, I mean, I personally can't say I really have no idea, but I can say that without fail, since I started checking that street out back in COVID times, so when I first started coming down here, got a BMXer, um, they have uh, swept it out. It looks like, so oh, this is probably where they came, because this part used to be empty. Looks like they probably relocated right there. That would explain that, honestly. That makes a lot of sense. This little sidewalk used to be empty. It looks like they kind of separated and split and became uh, two separate factions. Now they're, you know, one half up there, one half down there. Just, a, just another observation you make when you do too much ride in LA, folks. You see stuff that most people would never notice. I see something like that every day. Let's see if we can get around here. I don't know where I'm really at right now. We're just kind of, this is the definition of free riding because I, I have no clue where I'm at or where I'm going. I'm just looking for stuff to have fun on on this uh, incredible electric bike that I've been getting more and more familiar with as we do more rides. Checking out a random alley right now because I saw this alley and I didn't know where it leads. Looks like it kind of gets a little sketchy right here. It's definitely somebody's home. Built up right here. He just built a whole, oh shit, look at this whole community. This is crazy. We're not gonna go any further than right here. Looks like it goes around a corner. This is a house, it has a door. That is next level. Dude, I don't know what's going on back there, but someone has a whole like, they just, they just claim that that alley is their own real estate. I mean, hey man, if no one's gonna challenge you, why not, right? <laughs> if no one's gonna stop you, why? Why not, you know, expand your land to the most that you can? 
<laughs> if you can get away with it, hey man. I I don't live there, so I don't have a problem. I'm just riding around, checking stuff out. Look at this beautiful flat black Civic Type R. So he's in there. Dude, that thing's so clean. Love those cars. John Cena has a Civic Type R. I didn't know that until the other day. Pretty uh, nice choice for the, uh, the one and only You Can't See Me. Quick smash to the city, folks. If you guys enjoyed, consider subscribing, whether you're watching on TV, tablet, phone, or computer. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one very soon. Peace out.